I've created this tool that's been super helpful on all my sites, and I've decided to give it away to the Webflow community. So here you can enter your Webflow URL. So here's my site. And then from there, I'm going to paste in my OpenAI API key, and I can actually use ChatGPT on this site, and it'll have the full context of my site. So let's go ahead and select this logo marquee. I don't have to pass in its class or anything. I'll just say change the logo uh, marquee animation um, to stagger items in a random order each time they animate in and animate out. Um, and then we'll say uh, using GSAPs uh, from random, uh, just so it uses GSAPs stuff and not any JavaScript. So then I can just uh, hit enter and it's gonna run that through AI. And here it has the full context of my site, similar to how developers work with Visual Studio Code and the AI knows all about their site. Uh, typically when we're working with Webflow and we're pasting snippets into ChatGPT, it often doesn't get it right because it doesn't understand the relationship of this element's a child of this parent and they have these classes. So we have to go back and forth because it doesn't have the full context. But what's really nice about this is here, it has the full context of our site. Now, to do that, we do have to pass a lot in. So I would recommend working on smaller pages, like just putting the section you're working on on a page by itself to save on tokens. Uh, but you can kind of choose the models here that you'd like to use. So for instance, I find that mini has been the uh, most reliable for the lowest price. We can get cheaper with nano, but then it often takes multiple prompts for it to get it right. Um, whereas we can use fewer prompts here and it gets it better uh, by using a slightly more expensive model. So you can kind of choose the model that you want to use here based on your tokens. But so here it uh, found the actual logo animation code. This wasn't in the section. It was in the site settings footer. It was still able to find it. And it says replace this, this is my previous code, with this new code. So I can just click on that to copy it. And I have that new code copy. I can bring it straight into Webflow. And notice how now all my logos aren't animating from start to end. They're actually going in a completely random order. And uh, what I can do here, it looks like it even added a little bit of a slide up. It looks like they're moving up slightly, which is kind of nice. Um, what I can do here is just go ahead and tweak parts of this without having to run it all the way back through AI. So if I want this to be a little bit faster, if I want it to slide up using a rim unit instead of a uh, pixel unit, I can just make any of those tweaks right in here. And so now when I click off, it actually made those changes. I can preview them live. I didn't have to publish or wait for anything. Notice how these are all coming in a lot faster now. And I'm able to just make those changes directly on the page without having to wait for AI. Now, if I didn't like the response that AI I gave me, I could actually go back to my original site and then write a new prompt off that uh, to continue iterating off the original. But if I go back to this version, now any future changes I make will be iterating off of this new version here. Um, so what I can do is I want to animate this section to be a circle clip path instead. And if I could like pass in the class that I'm looking for here. Um, but what we can do instead is just click on this whole section and notice how it automatically grabs the tag classes, any attributes, anything that's on that element as context for AI. And if I hold shift and I click, I can select multiple elements that I want the AI to look at. Or if I just regular click, it will replace those existing elements. Um, I can also just kind of delete uh, out of here anything I want. So if I don't want it to target by the tag, but just by classes, we can do that as well. So I'm going to say inside of the section, um, inside this, um, change the clip path animation, clip path animation to use a circle clip path instead. And um, let's go ahead and just run that. So we're letting that go through here. And what that'll do is it'll be able to find any related elements and kind of give me my updated thing here. I do find that mini sometimes runs a little bit slow. Um, so changing your model can uh, help with speed a little bit. 
but that's uh, just something I found personally. Uh, so what, one thing we'll look at is how to actually create this API key that you can start to use. So if we head over uh, to platform.openai.com, you can click Start Building. And from here, if this is your first time setting it up, you ought to enter your organization name and probably what describes you and then create organization. And from here, you can skip inviting teammates. So we'll do that there. And then you would want to create an API key. I'll just call this my key. You can call it anything. And then we would just generate that key. So from there, you can actually just copy this key. And that's what you would actually paste right here into the key here. So that can go there. Um, and then in this case, though, uh, I'm going to hit continue. And to actually use that key, you'll need to uh, buy some credits. Otherwise, it would just show an error. Um, so you do need uh, some credits fund it. So uh, once you have that set, you can head to dashboard as long as you're logged in. And from here, you can click on usage to monitor like how you're tracking budget wise. Um, you can actually go to API keys if you need to delete your key or create a new one uh, from there. And then if you go to logs, it'll show any conversations uh, you've had. So any responses and things that came back with, uh, you'll be able to monitor from here. So now that we have that uh, set, uh, we'll notice here this is it found the scroll animation code on my site. And here I have the new animation code. And so if I scroll down to that section here, we'll be able to see now we have this clip path and it's just revealing like so that looks beautiful. And if I just kind of scroll through here, I'll notice it's starting at 20% revealed. So if I were to change that to something like 50%, for instance, and then I click off, now we'll notice that circle is going to start a bit larger, like so, and then it gets revealed. Or if I do something much smaller, like I do 5%, um, that circle is going to start really, really tiny. And, uh, and I can see that and then it gets revealed from there. So we can really start to tweak all of this stuff. Now, if I copy this, this is just copying the clip path part of the code. This isn't copying anything else we've done so far. So I would need to go back to my logo marquee chat. And then from here, I want to copy over um, the logo marquee code and be sure to bring that into Webflow. Um, so that's an overview of how to use this tool. I hope it helps you out when working in Webflow and using AI.